Hi all, uh, welcome to our presentation on time of supply with regard to goods uh, as given in model GST law. You are listening to C.A. Gaurav Garg. So, this concept uh, time of supply or this topic time of supply is very important. In GST, regime you know one needs to pay goods and service tax as and when required question comes when you need to pay that tax so time of supply is that moment when the liability to pay this goods and service tax arises under the central goods and service tax act or state goods and service service tax act when i say act you know the the probable act that may come up uh, in you know in june july or august whatever so the the idea of time of supply or the concept of time of supply becomes very important uh, when it comes to determining time when the liability is arising so it is given in section 12 of model gst law uh, section 12 talks about time of supply of goods and uh, section 13 talks about time of supply of services and uh, both these sections are given in chapter 4 of uh, model GST law. In this presentation we are going to discuss uh, section 12 which, with the, which relates to uh, time of supply of goods and uh, uh, soon we will upload the presentation on time of supply of services also with regard to section 13. So, subsection 1 as I said the significance is you know it talks about liability to pay central goods and service tax or state goods and service tax uh, which arises at the time of supply. So, understanding time of supply becomes very important. So, if you are not sure on time of supply you may not be sure on when you need to when this liability to pay uh, is arising. So, in this slide, you know, in this presentation, we will going to discuss time of supply with regards to goods. So, there could be uh, certain situations. So, what we have done, we have tried to, uh, you know, simplify it and we have tried to divide uh, time of supply in various uh, case, you know, there could be circumstances 1, 2, 3, 4, which we will going to discuss. So, the first scenario would be, you know, where supply involves movement. So, wherein supply involves movement earlier of, and it is very important, earlier of date of issue of invoice, date of removal of goods, date of receipt of payments. So, earlier of any of these incident, you know, uh, will become time of supply. So, it may happen that uh, you are removing goods today, uh, but you have issued the invoice one week earlier. And you, you will going to receive payments, you know, uh, one week uh, from today. So the date of issue, if, date of issue of invoice would be considered as time of supply. And uh, on that date, you know, we'll say the liability to pay CGST, SGST uh, would arise. Uh, so it is with regard to where supply involves movement, wherein the movement is intrinsic part of supply and supply will not get completed without movement for example let's say you are a, you have got a shop in delhi and uh, your customer is based out of uh, haryana and you receive an order from a customer wherein he requires you to deliver a good in haryana and you you know ships or, or you move the goods from your delhi shop to haryana so the date of removal of goods would become important. However, you know, uh, he, he says the customer calls you and says, "Look, you know, I am not uh, in town uh, from uh, starting, you know, next week. But you can raise me an invoice. I will make you the payment, and then you can remove the goods." So in such case, date of invoice becomes important because you know uh, important because you you would be raising the invoice, uh, which would be earlier to removal date or the receipt of payment. Uh, the third case could be a, a, again in you know where supply involves movement. 
uh, the cost you 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 tell your customer you know i will only make a, uh, a removal of goods or i will only deliver the good once you make me the payment and you uh, shares your bank detail with your customer and customer debits or you know customer actually makes the payment uh, to your bank account uh, and after receiving the payment you raise an invoice on the customer and then you uh, transfers or moves the goods from your location to the customer's location in such case the date of payment because you know uh, it is earlier to date of issue of invoice and date of removal so date of payment becomes the you know the uh, time of supply so in case where the uh, supply involves movement earlier of date of issue of invoice date of removal of goods or date of receipt of payment whichever is earlier becomes uh, time of supply so uh, it is you know uh, in line with section 12 subsection 2 read with section 28 uh, subsection 1 clause a the next case comes wherein the goods does not involve movement or in any other case in such case again similar to above case that the earlier of date of issue of invoice a date of delivery of goods or making available or date of receipt of payment so unlike above you know wherein the removal was necessity in a case two removal or is not necessity so what becomes important when you are handing over the goods to your customer or when you are making available to uh, goods to your customer so whichever incident is earlier whether it's date of issue of invoice date of delivery of goods or making available goods to your customer or date of receipt of payment whichever is earlier becomes the time of supply and one needs to pay tax accordingly to the uh, government it is in line with section 12 subsection 2 read with section 28 uh, subsection 1 clause b next case comes in case of continuous supply of goods so in case of continuous supply of goods uh, you know when you are continuing supply the go supplying the goods to your customer and uh, you know you are issuing the statements weekly monthly you know that is as case like for example you know you have got an office of chartered accountant and you are receiving stationery from your you know, vendor on a regular basis uh, and your vendor you know charges you or issues you, you know, this is uh, you know the statement on a weekly basis that this much what i have supplied to you during the week or during the fortnight or during the month so that comes under the continuous supply of good so again in this case uh, what becomes important is earlier of date of issue of invoice date of issue of each statement or date of receipt of payment so instead of issuing the invoice let's say you know every fortnightly you are receiving a statement from your vendor and you are signing off okay you know this is the goods that we have received during the fortnight and then later on you make the payments uh, then that issue of that statement you know the date of issue of that statement becomes important so it has been earlier to the issue invoice uh, the date of issue of invoice or the date of receipt of payment that becomes the time of supply it is in line with section 12 subsection 2 read with section 28 subsection 4 now the next case is again the continuous supply of goods where as the you know the cases of successive payments so let's say uh, you have entered into an arrangement or an agreement uh, with your vendor wherein you will say okay every week i will going to make the payment of this much you can supply me the goods accordingly or you know you say okay uh, these are the certain milestones on based on which i will going to make you the payment then payments you know is something we need to see but yes again the question comes uh, or, or we need to identify the earlier of date of issue of invoice date of each payment and date of receipt of payment so whichever is earlier becomes uh, you know the time of supply so it may happen that the milestone says that you will going to make a payment on milestone one which is scheduled to uh, get close on uh, you know let's say 15th february uh, but you make payment to your vendor on 10th february 
and your vendor receives a payment on 10th February. So time of supply will going to become 10th February. However, if you are following the milestones and once you receive the payment, then you are raising the invoice. Now in this case, because you are uh, receiving the payment earlier to date of issue of invoice, it will fall under this bullet, you know, bullet number two and uh, the time of supply would become the date of each payment. So this is with regard to continuous supply of goods. It is in line with section 12, subsection 2, read with section 28, subsection 4. The other case could be when tax needs to be paid on reverse charge basis. Uh, you know, reverse charge basis is where, wherein the receiver needs to pay tax rather than the supplier paying the tax. So again, earlier of date of receipt of goods, date of payment, and date immediately following 30 days from date, invoice date. So earlier of when you have received the goods or when you have made the payments or from the 30 days when you have received uh, the invoice, issue, issue of invoice and not the receipt of invoice, yes. So it is in line with section 12, subsection 3. The next is supply of voucher, case number 6, supply identifiable. So in this case, you know, when you are issuing the voucher and you are sure that, you know, this voucher is going to be used for this supply, then the date of issue of supply becomes important. And so you are issuing a voucher and this voucher can only be redeemed against the purchase of pen drives. So, you know, the on the date of issue of voucher, you are sure that from this against the voucher, one can only buy the pen drives. So, oh, in this case, you know, uh, supply is identifiable on the date of issue. So, date of issue of voucher becomes the time of supply. Another case could be when you are issuing the voucher, but you are not sure, uh, you know, uh, what would be the supply. So, you say, okay, this is the, let's say, 3 rupees, uh, rupees 300 voucher or a gift voucher of rupees 500 which you can use the uh, which which you can use again any of the product uh, in in your shop so you issues that voucher the customer takes that voucher and goes to the shop and buy some product so that in that voucher the discount comes let's say 500 or that value of the voucher is rupees 1000 then in that case you're not sure on the date of issue what customer would going to buy so date of issue cannot be the you know, supply your time of supply so time of supply comes you know when there is a surety yes that is the date of redemption of voucher becomes the time of supply so both the provision that is uh, case 6 and case 7 are given in uh, section 12 subsection 4 that is a and b Now, in any other case, you know, if it is not covered uh, under subsection, uh, sorry, under any of the above seven situations, then date of periodical returns or date of payment of tax, whichever is applicable. So, uh, I hope friends, you know, uh, with this short presentation, I am able to clarify on time of supply of goods. Uh, we have uh, more presentations available on YouTube channel on goods and service tax uh, keep watching them and if you have any feedback to share with us please feel free to share we will going shortly going to upload more uh, presentations on gst keep you know watching them thank you